going on. Good morning, everyone. How is everyone feeling today? 
Magnificent. So I have to tell you, I got up this morning a little bit late. I feel like I was dragging a little bit, but now I'm ready to lift up the energy. You want to lift up the energy with me? All right, here we go. Calling out around the world, are you ready for a brand new beat? Spirit's here and the time is right for dancing in the street. They're dancing in Toronto. And in Nigeria, they're bopping up in Sweden. All we need is music, sweet music. There'll be music everywhere. They'll be swinging and swaying and records playing, dancing in the street. Oh, it doesn't matter what you wear, just as long as you are there. So come on, everyone, dance and twirl everywhere around the world. Let's start dancing, dancing in the street. This is an invitation across all nations, a chance for folks to meet. They'll be laughing and singing and music swinging and dancing in the street. Philadelphia, PA. Santa Fe and DC now. Can't forget Motor City. All we need is music, sweet music. There'll be music everywhere. They'll be swinging and swaying and records street oh it doesn't matter what you wear just as long as you are there so come on everyone dance and twirl everywhere around the world let's start dancing dancing in the street up in thunder bay every day they're dancing in the street Let's form a long line, get in time. We're dancing in the street, dancing in the street. Across the ocean blue, dancing me the and street. you. We're dancing in the street, dancing in the street. Yeah. Well, that's got me going now. I'm so excited about this beautiful day. Welcome to Unity of Tucson. I'm Dr. Jonathan Zenz. I am the senior minister here at this glorious spiritual center where we gather every single Sunday to celebrate the good that is life, the good that is light, the good that is love. Thank you, Reverend William, by the way, for playing the iwi on our opening song. Yeah, we're here to celebrate all the good there is, and it's all good if you understand it from that point of view. There's going to be a little bit of talk about that today. Uh, how is it all good when we can look out and see challenges in the world, right? I mean, that, is, that, is that something that some of us struggle with? Yeah, I get it. I get it. I'm going to talk a little bit about that today in my message, but I am so delighted that you decided to spend a Saturday... Saturday? <laughs> I'm so grateful that you've decided to spend whatever day it is here with us this morning. (laughs) It is the now. No matter what, it's always the now. (laughs) It is Sunday morning. I am aware that it is Sunday morning. So, so (laughs) you know what? Why don't you take over? We here at Unity of Tucson, we have a set of tenets that we offer. Uh, We we are a teaching. I like to refer to the New Thought philosophy as a teaching more than anything. And one of the things that I like to remind us all of every single week is that you may not believe everything you hear today. It is not up to me to impress upon you any belief system. I'm, I'm not here to tell you what to believe. I'm not here to tell you what to think. What I think my job is, is to open you up, is to open us all up. And if you're willing to be receptive to opening, opening us up to ideas. And as we look at those ideas and we 
we play with those ideas in our lives, what I have found is that accepting some of the tenets that we teach for me has enhanced the quality of my life. And so I will continue to utilize the tenets, I will continue to utilize the teaching in my life as long as it works for me. And as Charles Fillmore always said, I reserve the right to change my mind. So if something comes up that challenges and invites me to a different understanding, then I will change my mind. And boy, isn't that the definition of freedom, which is this month's, yeah. That is this month's theme, freedom. We are free to change our mind. So uh, we have a vision and a mission here at Unity of Tucson. I would love for us as a community to state out loud first these words of our vision statement and do check in to see what do you feel about these as we say them together. Here we go. We envision a world awakened to its magnificence. Just check in with yourself to see how that feels. And we're going to state then out loud our mission statement. And again, just check in to see what happens for you. What does this feel like? Let's say these words together. Love only, forgive everything, remember who you are. Just take a moment. Just take the moment to see what that feels like. Hmm. I want to acknowledge and say hello to everyone who may be joining us for the first time today. Let me first say hello to anyone who may be joining us online for the first time today. If you're watching the uh, video live on this Sunday morning, not Saturday, <laughs> it is a delight to share this time with you. If you're watching in the archive, perhaps on a Saturday morning. <laughs> it is always now, wherever you are. <laughs> but I just want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you for being part of this energy, part of this community. And if you uh, go to unitytucson.com slash connect, you can fill out some information there, and we can keep this conversation going. And Thank you again for being here with us. If you're here with us in the room for the first time today, and I just want to acknowledge that, you know, the first time I stepped into a, a spiritual center or a church, and they were like, stand up if you're new. I was like, mm -mm, I'm not doing that. Very uncomfortable for me. So that's why I always say, if it is comfortable for you to identify yourself, we would like to share some love with you. So is there anyone who's joining us for the first time today? You can raise your hand or stand up. Welcome. Grateful to have you here. You, you, if you did not receive a, a welcome gift, there is a welcome gift for you in the lobby, uh, but there's another gift that we would like to share with you, and let us be gentle in our sharing of this. Shall we let them know? I know, everyone, I'm going to start saying that every week. <laughs> We're going to be gentle in our sharing. Here's what we know about you. Is everyone ready? Okay, here we go. You are magnificent. Take that in. How does that feel? Yeah. We share that with you, and one of the tenets that we offer here is that every single person we encounter is a reflection of that which is inherently part of us. And so when I choose to understand the magnificence in others, I also feel I am seeing the magnificence of myself, and I think we should all exclaim for ourselves the understanding of our magnificence by saying these words together. Here we go. I am magnificent. How does that feel? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Let's do it one more time. Here we go. I am magnificent. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Sherry's really magnificent. <laughs> um, I was looking at some notes from previous uh, years of my ministerial path, and one of the things I wrote at one point, I wrote this. I said, my faith tradition, this is me speaking about myself, I said, my faith tradition is meta-denominational. -denom Meta-denominational, denominational, meta meaning beyond denominations. It is beyond denominations. And that's one of the things that we share here at Unity of Tucson. I believe that the connective tissue of all religious paths, all spiritual ideas, all faith traditions, it's all love. And one of the ways that we celebrate that love every single week is with a ritual that we've adopted here in this community called Lighting the Flames of Faith. And so here today, to guide us in that ritual, please welcome Lorraine Pritz, who is making her way up to the platform, and Sherry Hoffman. Mm. 
<sighs> we light a candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium the natural way. We light a candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous people, the way of primal spirituality. We light a candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light a candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light a candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the four noble truths and the path of compassion. We light a candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light a candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of submission to divine love as the highest calling. We light a candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. We light a candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. We light a candle for all those as of yet aware of the power and presence of the spirit in their lives, for the space that we are holding for them and for all faith traditions unnamed in this ceremony. This final candle, it represents the revealing of divinity is the healing candle. The divinity at the core of all experience. This is your candle for whatever is in your mind and heart that requires the light. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Lorraine. If you're new to our community, this candle here is the peace candle. We keep the peace candle consistently illuminated as a representation and a reflection of the teaching that we, each and every one of us have a consistent illumination of peace in our own hearts. And as we individually allow our inner peace to inform our thoughts, our intentions, our deeds, our actions, every aspect of our livingness, that right where we are, each and every one of us becomes a beacon for peace. And so let's honor that understanding by sharing together this prayer for world peace. Divine love indwells each person and radiates from one to another. Harmony is established and peace reigns in the world. <clears throat> Making his way to the platform now to guide us with a reading, also in our monthly affirmation and in prayer, please welcome Reverend William Gill. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter silver wings. Sunward I have climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. Up, up along the lyrious burning blue, I've topped the windswept heights with easy grace, 
where never lark nor ever eagle flew. And while with silent lift in mind, I have trod the high untrespassed sanctity of space, put out my hand and touch the face of God. That poem is titled High Flight, and it was written by John Gillespie McGee, Jr. He was a pilot with the Royal Canadian Air Force, and he wrote that letter to his parents around September of 1941. At our center, we have a theme for the month, and the theme this month is freedom. We airplane pilots like to speak fondly of the freedom of flight, to be at altitude, to see the air through the cockpit windows. It is a sight that is priceless. To watch the sun set long after people on the ground watched it set, or to watch the sun rise above the overcast where people on the ground cannot see the sunrise. And so freedom is a choice that people make. And freedom is also a choice that requires an investment. So in life, choose and choose to invest in your freedom. We also have an affirmation every month. And this month, the affirmation was written by the great Laura Cass. I didn't know that was funny, but OK. <laughs> <clears throat> Our affirmation this month was written by the great Laura Cass. And I will say the affirmation once by myself. We will let it sink in for a moment. And then we will say it together twice. I rejoice in my freedom to choose. And I choose to live life to its fullest and with deepest joy. Together, I rejoice in my freedom to choose, and I choose to live life to its fullest and with deepest joy. Again, I rejoice in my freedom to choose, and I choose to live life to its fullest and with deepest joy. Allowing ourselves to settle into that deepest joy as we prepare for the practice of affirmative prayer, I invite us all to center and allow. I am dropping down to the truth of who I am. I am dropping down, surrendering in love. I am dropping. So we say, thank you, Spirit of God, because through my time in prayer, I realize my freedom. With the presence of Spirit, I am free. With the presence of Spirit, I am well. With the presence of Spirit, I am safe. My freedom comes through my spiritual practice, and I make the choice to be so. Thank you, God, for your love that never, ever ends, and it's always present and available in my life each and every day. I choose freedom. Thank you, Spirit. And so it is. Amen. I am dropping down to the truth of who I am. I am dropping.
Thank you, Reverend William. <laughs> hmm. I made a choice this week to sing a particular song without looking ahead. <laughs> so, so then, so I'm going to tell you what happens this morning, uh, and you'll understand when I tell you what the song is. So this morning, uh, because it's the final, I was going to say now the final Friday, and I don't, I don't know what day it is. It's the final Sunday in February. And so we will have a new theme and a new affirmation next month. And uh, Linda, being the dutiful music director, asked me, well, what's the theme for next month? And I said, oh, well, I have to go to my office to find out and double check. And so we walk in there, and I see that the theme for next month is genius. <laughs> now, the song will probably make you laugh. This one's for the undiscovered geniuses Or is it genie I, I never knew Who write and paint and chisel in their bedrooms Known forever by the last name who I know you're out there hit song on the airwaves you never broke out from the local scene you didn't paste your wall with famous faces and you prefer the window to the TV screen I know you're out there I know you're in there but common knowledge doesn't know jewels below I know you're out there I know you're in there dancing with your hopes and fears instead of chasing zeros the beautiful don't jump before the cameras the wise among us hardly ever speak every time we are sent a perfect teacher we miss them cause we overlook the meek I know you're out there I know you're in there but common knowledge doesn't know the jewels below I know you're out there I know you're in there harmonizing hearts and hand making stained glass from sand this one's for the folks who know they're precious but no more precious than the garbage man i kiss you on your cheek not on a poster because genius wants a lover not a fan the true lover. So the title of the song is Undiscovered Geniuses, and what a genius I was to put it on the final Friday of freedom, the final Sunday of, I don't know what it is, I keep saying the wrong day of the week, the final Sunday of freedom rather than uh, the first Sunday of Genius. It's, but you know what? There are no mistakes. It's all perfect. So this is a, this is a preview for next month. 
perhaps. <laughs> so there was a post that went up on uh, Facebook that was a question. And I'm going to, is it okay if I say your name? Reverend Jerry Strautemeyer put this post up and she asked a question because essentially the post said, if God is, God is all good. Basically, that, I mean, that was the tone of the post. I didn't write down exactly what it said, but it said, God is all good. And that is a fundamental to what we teach. God is good, right? God is all good. And then the question is, so then why do we have experiences of discord? Why do we have experiences of war? If God is all good, why do we have these things in our experience of life that seem contrary to that? I heard somebody say something. Well, it's because we are endowed with infinite freedom. And that freedom includes the freedom as humans to create discord in the experience of life. And I believe, and part of what I offer in teaching, is that if we truly remember who we are, then we cannot do anything but express the infinite nature of God, which I do believe is inherently good. But we separate ourselves from the infinite. We believe we are somehow separate from the infinite, and it is only in a sense of separation that discord can arise and express itself. So in thinking about what I wanted to offer today, there's, you know, there's some Emerson because that's the class I'm teaching, but I found this quotation uh, by Unity Minister Eric Butterworth, who is one of my favorites. I, I, I'm sorry that I never knew Eric Butterworth personally. I wish, I wish that I'd had that opportunity. Um, but he offered this. The religious experience and religious study is to help individuals to know themselves to become integrated with the transcendent flow of inner guidance and light and power and love. Light, power, love, those are only some of the attributes of the infinite power and presence that we call God, and it is who and what we are. And our, I, I think I ask myself the question sometimes, what are we here for? Why do we come here on a Sunday? I think part of it is to hear that type of message. The religious experience, religious study, the reason that we are here is to help ourselves come to know ourselves. That's how I would retranslate this, to help ourselves come to know ourselves, to allow ourselves to become integrated with the transcendent flow of inner guidance, that in, inner guidance that is the divine. And light and power and love, those are good things as far as I'm concerned. And if that is God's nature, the more we give in to allowing ourselves to be integrated and expressive of God's nature, the more we are doing good in the world. It's why that peace candle is so important to me because every single week I say it is a reflection of that which is inherent in each and every one of us. We can very easily cover up that inherent nature. We can very easily cover up that inherent nature. I see it all the time. The other part, oh, can you go back, can you go back to that? Thank you. I would actually add something to this. The religious experience and religious study is to help individuals to know themselves, to become integrated with the transcendent flow of inner guidance and light and power and love, and here's what I would add, and act accordingly. Because it's not just enough to know those things, but to allow that integration to show up in the expression of our lives. We are the active expression of the divine. And I'm not willing to sit back and go, God is all good. Yes, God is all good. That's the truth. But if it is not leading me into activity in my life, then it doesn't matter what I think or believe. The purpose of prayer, I always say the purpose of prayer, the purpose of affirmative prayer is to impel action within us, to know the truth the spiritual truth of any given situation, and then as a result, impel action within us in accordance with the prayer that has been spoken. And so our work is to act according to the spiritual nature that we inherently are. So if we are devoting our time to knowing the truth, what we are doing is we are setting ourselves free from ignorance. 
And that's why I choose to continue to show up here, because this is my dedicated time. My entire life I've dedicated to knowing more of, and I'm going to put it in quotes, the truth, because I will get, inevitably get asked the question, well, what is truth? Well, I hold in my heart that there is a spiritual truth. Part of that spiritual truth is that God is all there is. And so I hold that as a spiritual truth, the truth for myself. And in aligning my own mind, my own thoughts, my own feelings, my own heart space in with that infinite truth, then I am free of ignorance. And I find myself in alignment with the wholeness that I inherently am. And as a result, I live in harmony. We can live in harmony, each and every one of us. We can live in harmony when we recognize that truth of our own sense of divinity, but here's the other part of that. Then we also have to accept that every single person we encounter is divine as well. And boy, that can be hard when we look at people's behavior. But it is my work, my role, my desire to love everyone, even if I disagree with their behavior. I choose to let that be the point of view from which I experience and live my life. Ignorance is only sown from ideas of separation. And ideas of separation show up then as discordant experiences. That's a premise of what we teach here. The construct of separation, which only exists in our minds, is what leads us to discordant experiences in the world of form. I think it is my belief that this is what Ralph Waldo Emerson was offering as well when he wrote his essays. This week, we launched into, we, we, we took a dive into his essay, Self-Reliance, which is perhaps one of the most influential essays uh, in American history, for American history. And uh, it certainly is one of the most influential essays on the New Thought movement. And every time I read Emerson, and I've been reading Emerson for years and years and years, and especially this particular essay, I feel like it's the first time I'm reading it. And while there are th passages that I have committed to memory, <laughs> um, a foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of little minds is one of them. <laughs> That's not what my talk is about today, but that's one of the passages from that particular essay that I've committed to memory. Um, I am always inspired into something new every time I read Emerson. And, and perhaps the reason is because when I am rereading these essays, my mind is newly made in that moment because our minds are newly made in every single moment. Therefore, every time I read it is the first time. And I always start at the beginning of the essay, good place to start, where he has this Latin phrase. And I challenged the class this week. I said, so there's this Latin phrase, ne te quasi veris extra. That's how he starts the essay. And I said, did any of you look it up? There were a couple who did, and I'm not here to shame anyone else in the class, but it's also why I'm there to tell you what it means. Uh, Ne te quasi veris extra means never seek outside yourself. Never seek outside yourself. And there's the rub. Because if we take this to heart, if we, if we truly take this to heart, then I would ask you the question, what are you doing here? Why show up on a Sunday morning? Why read books? Why engage in spiritual community? Why study anything if we are called to not seek anything outside ourselves? Well, I do have an answer. <laughs> William has an answer. Maybe our answers will align. I'm going to say my answer, and then you can tell me, yes, that aligns. So here's my answer. That the experiences that we engage in, the reading, the study, the spiritual community that we engage in, these things combine to spark that inner thing within every single one of us. It is to catalyze inspiration so that we can come to understand what it is that is within us. I am inspired to know something perhaps beyond just the words written on the page. 
Inspiration comes, is, is, does that align? Yes, he's saying yes, yes, that aligns. Inspiration comes from the capital S self, the infinite self. And we do sometimes use that as a, as a, as a thing, capital S self, which then we differentiate from the lowercase f, f, f self. I don't know why that, something is going on with me today. The lowercase s self, we differentiate those two, and then here's what happens. We start to believe that they are separate things. So you see how easy it is to get into this seeming separation? Because the capital S self is the lowercase s self. They are one and the same, and there is no separation at all. But inspiration comes from that which is within the capital S sense of self. And so Emerson offers us this. To believe your own thought, to believe that which is true for you in your private heart is true for all men, that is genius. Genius. And it's not limited to men. He was writing at a particular time where gendered language was the norm. To believe in your own, to believe your own thought, to believe that which is true for you in your private heart is true for all, or just all, that is genius. Genius, I think, is partially expressed through critical thinking. We cannot be truly ourselves without thinking critically about the experiences we're having. We can look at the news. I'm not going to suggest you look at the news necessarily. I'm going on a bit of a news fast myself right now. Um, but we can look at the news, and if we have a critical eye and a critical mind and a critical heart space around what we are observing, then we needn't be adversely affected by what is on the news. Now, there are those of us who are more empathic, and I get, you can't watch that. That's okay. That's okay. I'm not telling you to go out and do it. I'm just saying, we have the capacity, each and every one of us, to understand it from the spiritual perspective, not the relative perspective. But sometimes we get so lost in the relative facts that we forget there is spirit at the core of all of it. There is God at the core of all of it. There is love at the core of all of it, even if that love is expressing itself in discordant ways. But that's what the individualization in each and every one of us may do. We have that freedom to express God in whatever manner we decide to express God. Some of us do it one way. Others of us do it a different way. Critical thinking opens our eyes. It's one of the things that attracted me to the New Thought philosophy is because it is an invitation into critical thinking, into thinking about what it is, the reason that we are here, the nature of being. Critical thinking opens our lives so that we may, each and every one of us, become leaders and not simply follow. If there is anything I'm looking to do here, I'm looking to put myself out of work. Think about it. I want you all to be spiritual leaders to such a degree that this paradigm is not required for us to come back every single Sunday and have a reminder because we are just simply living the infinite truth and going out and expressing that in life. And so today, I'm encouraging each and every one of us to not dismiss the gleam. What does that mean? I'm about to tell you. Emerson offered this. And again, re redefine the gendered language for yourself. A man should learn to detect and watch that gleam of light which flashes across his face more than the luster of the firmament of bards and sages. Yet he dismisses without notice his thought because it is his. He's inviting us into a greater understanding and realization of the truth of our being that we sometimes dismiss because we consider ourselves less than. I am here to tell you, you cannot be less than. That's why we say every single week, you are magnificent, I am magnificent. We are the magnificence of infinite nature, the infinite spiritual nature embodied and expressed at all times. There is no aspect of our physical beingness which is not 100% holy. Are you willing to live life from that point of view? That which makes us, us, is 
compromised when we think we need to conform to the ideas of others. That's why every Sunday I say, you may not like everything you hear, you may not believe everything you hear, but I'm going to offer you a an idea, perhaps, that you can then take and consider and determine if you want to put that to use in your life. I'm not here to tell you what to think or what to believe. And that, I think, is what differentiates new thought from many traditional philosophies. When we dismiss that gleam of light, the inspiration, or uh, the inspiration for me means the breath of divinity. When we, when we dismiss that inspiration, we do ourselves no favors, and our genius remains at bay. It remains hidden. The nature of genius within each and every one of us, and we are each and every one of us geniuses. That's why I love that song so much. I've sung that song a few times in this community and before I was ever part of this community because it is a call to each and every one of us to not align with the idea that genius has to be something out there to impress the masses. It's not. We are each and every one of us geniuses in our own right. And if we allow the inner genius to express itself, Oh, how magnificent this world will be. Because when we all approach life from that point of view, there can be no discord because in knowing your genius, you are knowing the spiritual truth about the self. Another thing that compromises us is when we feel, oh. Another compromising thing is when we feel justified in vehement defense of our ideas. Have you ever gotten into an argument? <laughs> Once. I've been in an argument. Um, I know that probably shocks you. Here's what I find about, here's what happens typically in arguments. Usually if you're in argument, neither of you are listening. You're only defending. What if we actually stopped and listened? What if those places in the world that are experiencing conflict actually stopped and listened rather than defending? There are two things wrapped up in this. Number one, I believe, I believe that the spiritual truth doesn't need defense. Number two, there is nothing dishonorable about having our minds changed. The nature of the maritime, I'm going to call it the maritime arts, that is, sailing, shipping, any of that. The nature of of, of shipping or sailing is that there's this thing that can happen Uh, where the ship needs to do what's called uh, tacking, where it's basically doing a zigzag to maintain a course. And from a distance, that zigzag looks like a straight line if you get back far enough. But in fact, what's happening is on closer examination, there are constant modifications that the ship or the boat are taking to maintain the course. It's the same in our lives. They're constantly zigzagging. They're constantly tacking in order to maintain our course. And the course can be changed. Because what may happen is if you're on the sea and you're tacking, you're zigzagging, you maintain that course, and oh gosh, I see that there looks like a storm ahead. If I'm in alignment with actually paying attention, I will see the storm, the coming storm ahead, and I can then change my course to let go of the experience of the storm. Anyone ever experience a storm in their lives? I have. Oh, have I experienced some storms in my life. If only I had known then what I know now. There is no one who can truly tell us what is right for us. And it is not ours to tell others what is right. Our work is to be self-reliant. Our work is to detect the gleam 
not to dismiss the gleam, to watch it and then shine forth. Let us keep the high watch in our own minds. The joy of life, the happiness that we seek is all sourced in that capital S sense of self and nothing else. That is what I feel, personally, is the purpose of our practice. But I will ask you, because I'm not here to tell you what to feel, what to think, or what to believe. Take a moment for yourself to determine what is it you feel, what is it you think, what is it you believe. I think what we offer here in this spiritual center invites us to exhibit courage. It invites us to exhibit confidence, confidence which is self-reliance without apology. It's an invitation to exhibit these things and invites us to insist upon ourselves and never imitate. Insist upon yourself, never imitate. That is one of those magnificent phrases of Emerson that I have committed to memory. Insist upon yourself, never imitate. Spiritual practice helps bring me to clarity, and that clarity is this. I am not separate from life. I am not separate from life. In fact, life is living me, and I get to captain the ship. That's what I know. We are not here to rationalize or develop a system of rationalization that God is good, because that sometimes can also lead us to the road of spiritual bypass, because if we step back and go, oh, God is all good, it's all great, and then our lives are falling apart around our ears, we are absolutely missing the point that we are in charge, each and every one of us. We are not here to rationalize the idea that God is good. We are here to demonstrate God as goodness. That's our role in our personal lives. And we are here to share that goodness in all we do. So my final message to you today is this. Shine your light. Do not dismiss the gleam. Peace and blessings. You are magnificent. If you are new to our community, I give homework every week. And the homework is an opportunity, I think, for us to put into practice the lesson that we've learned here today. And so my homework today uh, is really a practice of opening up our awareness to begin to detect the gleam and to see what perhaps needs some addressing, needs some shifting in our lives. So I want us all to pay attention this week to listening, the manner in which we listen. And I would like us to look at listening on three different levels. First, in your experience, listen to what is being said. It can be what is being said by others, or it can be what is being said by yourself. What, what am I saying? Listen to what is being said. That's number one. Number two, listen to what you think about what is said. So as you hear somebody say something, or as you hear yourself say something, what is that little voice in the back of your mind saying? Is it in alignment? Is it in agreement? Or is it in a state of discord? Listen to what you think about what is said. And then the third takes it even deeper. Listen to what you think about what you think. <laughs> it's an invitation to drop down, to go deeper to uncover the layers that sometimes are hidden because it is in that realm of consciousness that is below the level of awareness. This is an invitation to begin to let it well up and to make determinations accordingly. One of the things that I love to do is to celebrate love. And so I'm going to invite us all to relax right where we are. If there's anything that has resonated in your heart here today, one kernel of an idea, let that be present in mind and heart right now and simply relax into this spiritual practice of song and prayer with me. As time has washed over me, it has revealed to me life's nothing less than sublime. 
With every thought I make, every last breath I take, may I be gracious and kind. Love, I invite you to open up this heart of mine. Love, cover me, light any darkness. Love, cover me, right every wrong. Cause me to see love over hatred. Guide me to be faithful and strong. Love, cover me. Love, cover me. Kindness wash over me. Make me a symphony. Play every note you can find. Make me reverberate, gently deactivate, slowly flow out of my mind. Find me a melody, dance and let my anthem be. Love cover me, light any darkness. Love cover me, right every wrong, cause me to see. Love cover me, love cover me, love cover me. I invite us all to relax right where we are, opening our hearts and minds up to the infinite, knowing that the infinite is that aspect of the sense of capital S self right where we are. We are expressions of wholeness, each and every one of us, for wholeness is all there is. God is all there is. This magnificent power, this magnificent presence is letting itself be known as all creation. And I hold firm in my resolve that it is inherently constructive. It is inherently good. It is forward-moving and evolutionary. And I choose to be part of the forward movement, the evolution, the goodness that is God in all relative activity. And I do so by reminding myself that I am that I am, as we all are, each and every one of us, the magnificence of God. So I know that all is well. Our genius is fully expressed because that is its nature, to express by means of us. And I settle my mind into a greater awareness and know that I can rely upon the infinite as me and encourage each and every one of us to do the same. It is with joy, gratitude, and absolute magnificent appreciation overflowing from within that I simply allow it to be as I release trust and know this to be so and I affirm it by saying and so it is amen Love cover 
How are you feeling? I feel, I feel it. I feel the energy of love, and I'm so grateful to you. Will you please welcome to the platform one of our fabulous, magnificent, glorious, brand new board members <laughs> here to guide us today in our offering. Please welcome Dr. Deborah Hobbs. And speaking of love, this woman is love embodied and expressed at all times, and I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so, so much. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's always wonderful to be here with all of you. Today I'm going to share a trip down memory lane. When I was eight years old, or nine, my mother read this book to me. You may recognize it, The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. When I heard this story, I thought this was the saddest story I ever heard. I remember thinking to myself, love is unfair, unkind. When I was a young mom, I read this to my daughter when she was about eight or nine years old. I wanted her to appreciate and understand the sacrifices I was making on her behalf. Well, I remember her saying, Mom, that's the saddest story I ever heard. <laughs> Miraculously, now, in my journey, this beautiful love story is our story. I now know that this story centers on love only, forgive everything, remember who you are. But there is a rub. Because loving only means that sometimes people are not going to salute you when you sacrifice out of love on their behalf. Sometimes love is quiet, humble, even silent. Like in this giving tree, Book when the boy would climb its trunk with its rugged shoes, pull off her leaves and swing from its branches and eat its apples. Forgiving everything means enduring unkindness sometimes. Like in the giving tree, when the boy cut off her branches carried them away to build his house and cut down its trunk to make a boat and sail away, and yet the tree was happy. Remembering who we are always means giving what we have and we can to a fellow traveler. Sometimes in Life, like the giving tree, while weary and worn, 
still offered its stump as a sitting and resting place for the boy. And the tree was still happy. Please give what you can to help a fellow traveler. It is our being and our doing co-joined. It's the way of the Camino, Camino de Santiago and Camino Blanco. (laughs) There are a variety of ways in which you can give. You can use this code here. The envelopes are in front of you. You can go on electronically. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Devra. As we pass the baskets, feel free to stand if you like, move your body in any way you can as we circulate our love. I circulate my love right now, I circulate my love. Circulate my love right now, I circulate my love. I circulate my love right now, I circulate my love. Circulate my love right now, I circulate my love. And it returns, returns to me. I circulate my joy. Circulate my joy right now. I circulate my joy. I circulate my joy right now. I circulate my joy. Circulate my joy right now. I circulate my joy. And it returns, returns to me. Multiply. Right now, I circulate my gift. Circulate my gifts right now, I circulate my gifts. Please welcome Sherry Hoffman, one of our prayer chaplains here and also a member of our board, but she is here to guide us in the blessing of the offering today. Uh, So recently I bought some Care Bear socks and I picture that little rainbow shooting out of my hands and aiming out those pockets. (laughs) Let us say it together. We We bless bless these these gifts gifts, and and we we see see these gifts gifts going going out. out. And And blessing blessing our our community community and and the the world. world. And so So it it is. Amen. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you so much. Here's what's happening at Unity of Tucson. It's Sunday, February 25th, 2024, and here's what's happening at Unity of Tucson. Starting March 2nd, plan on attending Unity of Tucson's class offering the 12 Powers, Spiritual Tools for a Magnificent Life. Students will develop and learn to use the 12 powers as they embrace a more meaningful and fulfilling spiritual practice. Sign up in the Desert Light Bookstore or online at unitytucson.com. Sophia, Sisters of Faith in Action, Unity of Tucson's women's group, meets Saturday morning, March 2nd in Harmony Hall. Join the Unity Women's Group from 10 a.m. to noon for camaraderie, spiritually deepening exercises, and fun. Contact your administrative team for more information. Also on Saturday, March 2nd, please join Sherry Hoffman for Dance Zen, an evening of expressive free-form dance beginning at 6 p.m. in Harmony Hall. Dance Zen is offered on a suggested $10 donation basis. And coming up next Sunday, March 3rd, plan on attending Unity of Tucson's monthly potluck. Bring a delicious dish to share. We will celebrate March birthdays and anniversaries, too. Unity of Tucson's annual yard sale will be held Friday and Saturday, March 8th and 9th from 7.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Items for donation may be delivered to Unity of Tucson during regular business hours. 
For best results, call the office ahead of time to schedule your delivery. Finally, Unity of Tucson will be hosting Awakening the Heart, a satsang experience presented by traveling monk Brian Lottman. Join us Wednesday, March 13th at 6 p.m. for a blissful sound bath of musical chanting. This event is being offered on a suggested $30 donation basis. You can find out more about all of our events, classes, and other ways to get involved in our spiritual community by visiting the Desert Light Book and Gift Store or online at unitytucson.com. Have an amazing and magnificent week. Glorious. Um, there is also one more announcement that I do want to offer, and that is there is going to be... Is Karen Ives in here? Yeah. Is the meeting next week or is it today? The day after the yard sale. Got it. Okay, so uh, March, 39th, March 10th, uh, I can do that in my brain. March 10th, there is going to be a meeting of the events committee and some of the things that are happening now that once the yard sale is complete. That's one of the events that we offer every year. Coming up are some other events. I'm going to say burgers and bingo. Uh, there's going to be a taco and trivia night. And so that's all coming up. And we would love to see anyone who's willing to support our events uh, to show up at that meeting. Even if you have not been to an event committee meeting before, you can join and you can have fun with the events committee. They are very active this year in putting together magnificent, magnificent events. I want to say thank you to everybody who made the uh, experience today so magnificent. I want to say thank you, first of all, to our keepers of the flames, uh, Lorraine and Sherry. Thank you for lighting the flames of faith today. Yes, I want to say... <laughs> Also to Sherry for guiding us in meditation this morning and also guiding the blessing this morning. I want to say thank you to Reverend William Gill for your reading, your affirmation, and your prayer, and also playing the iwi today. Thank you so much, Reverend William Gill. <laughs> Sherry and Reverend William will be available following the celebration today here in the sanctuary. If you would like a moment of prayer, uh, you can seek them out, let them briefly know what is happening for you, and they will be there to pray for you in what I like to call one-minute miracles. Um, we are a we are, we are a community that is rooted in the understanding of the power of prayer, and so prayer is what we do. Please seek out a prayer chaplain uh, if something is happening for you. You can also always write your prayer intentions out on a prayer intention form, put it into the box, which is in the lobby, or you can always send an email to prayer at unitytucson.com. Let us pray on your behalf, and know that in the action of submitting your desire, you've actually started the healing work. You've started it. We get to support that. So grateful, grateful, grateful. Um, I want to say thank you to our sharing speaker, Dr. Deborah Hobbs. Thank you so much today. Blessings to you. It, this, this magnificent community does not unfold without a lot of support. Our hospitality team led by Mark Penterman, so grateful to him and his entire team. I want to say thank you to our greeters and our ushers. Um, I want to say thank you to our technical team back there, Fabian and Don and Jim and Kyle back there. Thank you so much. Let's hear it for this glorious group of musicians, Linda Ackerman, Rafael Carruthers, Paul Gibson. Yes. I'm going to say thank you to each and every one of you for being here today, for making your presence known, not just here at Unity of Tucson, but in this extraordinary thing called life. You are magnificent, and I do not take that for granted ever. Thank you for being here. As we complete our time here today, I invite us all to share together this prayer of divine awareness. I am infinite light. I am infinite love. I am infinite power. I am infinite presence. Wherever God is, I am. Wherever I am, God is. And so it is. Amen. Feel free to move your bodies. We close in song. I had a dream so big and loud. I jumped so high, I touched the clouds. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. I stretched my hands out to the sky and danced with monsters through the night. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. I'm never gonna look back. Whoa, I'm never gonna give it up. No, please don't wake me now. Ooh, ooh, this is gonna be the best day of my life. My life. Best day of my life.
Everyone.